Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is an important one and something I've really been wanting to share with you guys. I get a ton, a ton, a ton of comments that say things like, how do you do it all? I don't know how you do it with all those kids and do you really do your hair and makeup every day? And all these kinds of questions. Really like a very trendy thing right now to talk about authenticity and somebody's being really real or they're not being real and that kind of thing. I wanted to just kind of talk about this and really kind of hit these like four or five major points that for me make a difference in how I live my days every single day, why I do things the way that I do and what I share and don't share on social media. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the first thing is Guys, my life has crappy moments too. You are kidding yourself if you think that just because I don't post those things all the time that they're not happening. That is something you need to know. I don't care how perfect that person's life looks like it is. Everybody has their problems, their issues, things going on. That is called life. It is called being a human being. And so for some of us, myself included, I don't feel like I want to expose my family and kids in that way by sharing every single thing that they do wrong, that they say, every fight we have, every financial struggle or something like that. I, I'm just, for me, that's a line I'm not willing to cross. My kids make mistakes, they do bad things, they're mean to each other, yes, they fight. I mean, we have all these things, but I'm not going to go out of my way to share those things that are happening. This sounds really harsh, but to make somebody else feel better about what's happening in their house. Because if you have kids, then you should know that that is the reality. Nobody's kids are perfect. This is not like the Stepford wives. These are not the Von Trapp kids. They are going to fight. They're going to have issues. We're all going to have issues. And we, we can absolutely talk about those issues. And I love to talk about parenting issues and struggles, but I don't love to get super specific as it relates to each one of my children. For me, that's an invasion of privacy for them that I'm not comfortable with. So that's why that's something you're probably never going to see on my channel is or on any of my social media is, you know, me kind of humiliating and shaming my kids for stuff that they do. Everybody has to set their own boundaries, but for me, that's just a boundary I don't cross. The second thing, when people say, wow, you get more done in a day than I do and I don't have any kids and all this kind of stuff. Here's what you need to know about me. I used to be incredibly lazy. I used to be a slug with a capital S. I would lay around on my, on my you know what. And as a teenager, I was a lazy teenager. I just, you guys, I used to be so terribly lazy. And so when Kennedy and Shelby were babies, I did not get nearly as much done then as I do now with seven kids. I, my life is one that requires me to be productive. If I am not productive, the wheels fall off and this train just goes chugging its way right into the freaking ocean. In a big family, you don't really have the luxury of not having it together for the most part. You can have days where things fall apart, you can have moments where things fall apart, but in general, you kind of have to have your ish together. Otherwise, like I said, it's a fiery crash off the side of a mountain. Also, I am an extremely motivated person. Again, I did not, I don't know, I think I've always been on some level, but my motivation has really been strong over the last five or six years around the time we started our adoptions. And I realized how intentional I needed to be about changing my life and making my life what I wanted it to be. Nobody else was going to come in like a knight on a white horse and save me. Nobody else was going to make the things happen in my life that I wanted to happen. Nobody else was going to achieve my goals. I became this person that said, okay, you know what? then I'm going to have to do this. I want this. I want X. So I'm going to have to do all the steps to get me here. Nobody else is going to do any of those steps for me. My husband loves me. He's going to help me as much as he can, but he can't do those things for me. And guys, I don't come at this. I'm not preaching at you. Um, and I'm not coming at this from a place of just like, oh, I read this in a motivational book. So let me just share it with you. It is not that. It's from tried and true experience and failures and many, many different things that I have done in my life. If you ask my husband how many different things I have attempted, it's been a lot, but I've had some really amazing successes in some of those things. So, so that is why I get up and I do the things I do every day and I take the baby steps to get me closer to my goals because those are things that I care about and nobody else can do them for me. 
Nobody else is going to take the steps to get me towards the things that I want to do. And let me be clear about something. I know we live in a society right now that kind of pushes a few different things. Words like hustle, goals, authenticity, real. These are all words that get thrown around a ton. So when I say like my goals and things that I want, that Yes, some of them are big goals. Some of them are big things. I want to run a half marathon. I want to write a book. I want to travel around the country with my family in an RV. Sure, those are big goals. And so when I talk about goals like that, they are big. But I also have smaller goals. I want my home to be more organized. I want to simplify things in my life and in my home. I want to create more margin in my life, more time for being able to just rest and relax and be with my people. But I have to do things to actually make that happen. Laying in bed and complaining about how much time I don't have or laying in bed and just like wishing that that book would write itself or wishing that closet would organize itself, none of that stuff is ever going to happen by itself. I am not Cinderella, there are no woodland creatures coming in to rescue me. And unless you're Cinderella, I don't think they're coming to rescue you either. So that's why I do talk a lot about like goals and things that motivate me and inspire me because the only time I've ever been successful on a, any kind of a diet or exercise was when I did it with someone else. Accountability and sharing that with someone else helps us, I think, to reach our goals and do things better when we have somebody else that we're kind of talking to and sharing. So I like to share those things with you guys. And after I post on Instagram stories about like, you know what guys, I'm tired and I don't feel like it, but I'm gonna go run on the treadmill because I really want to run this half marathon and I need to train tonight. I'm gonna do it even though I'm tired. And then I come back from doing that and I have like 50 DMs from you guys saying, thank you so much for saying that. I'm gonna go downstairs and do X before I go to sleep because it's part of what I need to do to achieve my goal. Um, when I get those kind of messages, for me it says it's totally worth it to share that kind of stuff. We can all motivate each other. When you guys send me those messages, that motivates me even more to keep doing. So we all just have to be supportive and encouraging of each other. Okay, and my last, sorry I'm scratching, dry skin. My last point on this topic, and one that is probably the most important point, and I should have made at the beginning because for me this has changed everything, is a combination. So maybe it's like two things, it's a combo. One, it's my faith. Um, I don't think most of us here, you guys watching this video, we are not all of the same faith, the same denomination, the same beliefs. But for me, my faith is at the core of who I am, what I am, what I do, why I do it. So that's a huge piece for me. But the second part of that is perspective. And you guys know, I've, I've told you a little bit about the time that I spent in the Congo when I was there adopting my son. And this, this girl who'd never left suburban America, I'd never been out of the country, I'd never seen poverty, I didn't, I just didn't have any clue. I was so, so naive. And I went there and I saw an incredible, beautiful country and people that I love very much, but I saw a lot of poverty. I saw a lot of struggle. I saw a lot of heartache. But the thing that changed me the most in that trip, sitting outside in the like the lawn area of the procure where we were staying and watching the staff there. If you think that like weights, like maids and housekeepers and stuff here don't make a lot of money, imagine what they make over there. Not much. But watching those people do that job, folding people's laundry, cleaning rooms, cooking meals, all that kind of stuff, doing that, those jobs and doing them with joy and happiness, singing, whistling, dancing, laughing, joking, and not just doing their job with joy, but then coming to people like me and the other moms that were there, you know, saying like, how can we help you? Do you need help with the baby? Can I take the baby for a couple of minutes? Or let me go to my house, it's just down the street. I have almost nothing, but let me give you some of what I have. Giving when they didn't even hardly have enough to make ends meet themselves. And so when I came back from that trip, my perspective on everything was changed. My perspective on my life and the hardships in my life was completely changed. I just felt like if those people can live with joy and happiness in face of the things that they struggle with on a daily basis, like making sure their kids have enough to eat, then me, who's over here stressing about whether or not I packed a totally organic meal in a sustainable steel container um, for my kids to take to their free elementary school that they get to go to because that's a right for them in this country, 
it changes everything. You guys, it changes everything. Perspective changes everything. Seeing your life for what it really truly is and being grateful for the things that you really have. Um, for me, that's made all the difference. I do. I juggle a lot of things. I would be lying if I pretended like, oh no, it's not that big of a deal. It's totally a big deal. It is a huge deal to parent seven children and homeschool some of them and have newborn twins. You guys, I'm at max capacity of balancing, trying to keep my job and my career, my the things that are important to me and that I want to achieve, keep that plate spinning along with all of the other plates is really, really hard. And I don't do it perfectly every day. Some days I fail miserably at it. It's, it's all about balance. Some days I do. I'm just like, today I'm staying in bed. I'm with the babies, we're in our pajamas and I'm staying in bed today. And that's what we do. The girls get a day off of school. We don't do any schoolwork. We do nothing. We let the house go to shambles. Now that doesn't happen super often, but it happens. You guys, it's called a mental health day and I take them just like anybody else does. So there you go. I wanted to answer that for you guys, the how I do it all. I, I don't do it all. I have help. I have my husband. I told you guys before, I have a housekeeping person that comes. Like we don't do, I don't do it all by myself. But the things that I do and the things that I um, kind of take on and have on my plate, I do my best. I work hard. I don't give up on myself because nobody else is going to believe in me as much as me. So I don't give up on myself and I just keep trying. And if I have a really bad day, then I hope that the next day is going to be better. And the thing that I hope will be the biggest takeaway for you from this video is that for me, my joy and my happiness and the things that I choose to do with my time and everything, it all comes from a place of being grateful for what I have. And I have that gratefulness because of perspective and having perspective for what I have in my life. Sometimes I talk too much. Okay, I'm done talking now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again for spending some of your very precious time with me. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys again really soon. Bye.